So, Disenchantment Part 3 dropped last week, and we got to see a couple more examples of this really cool ancient alphabet slash language that we got a hint of back in Part 2. The writers and creators of Disenchantment are no strangers to these kinds of alphabet ciphers either. Back in Futurama, they created not one, but two different alien languages that were translated by fans and used to decode background gags and easter eggs. In fact, fans had basically figured out Futurama's first alien script within a single airing of Futurama's pilot episode, Space Pilot 3000. Basically, they noticed that there was a slurm bill in this scene that said drink slurm, and later that same design is seen on a slurm poster, but with alienese in place of the word drink. This was the first mini Rosetta Stone for the fans, who then managed to translate this piece of graffiti in the same episode by filling in the blanks. Honestly, I'm really impressed by this because there were only two shared letters between the drink slurm sign and this graffiti, but somehow they managed to determine that it spells Venusians go home, a committed fan base from day one. The second Futurama alien script was much more complicated, and while they provided some visual help, like these monoliths, it took months for fans to crack the code. Honestly, I still don't fully understand how that one works. With Disenchantment's ancient script, they've been a lot more withholding of examples within the show. The first piece was showcased back in part two, and fans pretty quickly deciphered it, determining that it spelled out quod est occultatum. I'm probably pronouncing that horrendously wrong because it's Latin. Anyways, it translates to it is hidden. Honestly, there must have been some actual cipher busters at work on this because I have no idea how they managed to decode this. Again, impressive and committed fan bases. So when they showed this massive piece of ancient script in the 10th episode of Disenchantment Part 3, I immediately jumped to try and translate it, as did many other fans of the series. Here's how I did it. First, I took the previously translated letters, which were A, C, D, E, L, M, O, Q, S, T, and U, and inserted them where they fit, which gave us this. A decent chunk was legible thanks to the previous translations. Next, I looked for obvious words with missing letters, and the first to stand out was that this is clearly dreamland, which gives us additional translations for letters R and N. So after filling in those letters, we got this. So this really helped fill it out. Next, there were a couple more clear words thanks to these additions. I could tell that this said future, so this gave us the F translation. And because both of these letters were the same in this word, it was safe to assume it was a vowel, which helps determine that this probably says citizens. So now we have F, I, and Z to translate through. Z doesn't help much, but F and I are huge. So here's what it looks like after adding those. So we're getting pretty close here, and there's a lot more we can determine. This word seems to say fought, and because something was fought, we can assume this word was battle, which gives us B, G, and H, all very helpful letters. Add those to the translation, and we get this. And from here, the rest is honestly pretty simple. It's hard to mess it up in context. The full translation says, A battle was fought between these kings and the rightful citizens of Dreamland who lost and cast a curse on all future rulers. This lines up with some of the information we were spoon-fed throughout part three of Disenchantment, and also with what Oddval said about the translation. Mm, those crazy runes tell of a battle fought in Dreamland long ago between Tiabini's ancestors and their foes. We learned that there seemed to be a curse placed on the monarchal line of Augs, and the fact that this script specifically underlines the word rightful citizens is telling. It's clearly hinted in episode 10 that the elves are actually the original settlers of Dreamland, based on the discovery of this ancient throne. The legendary ancient seat of elven power. And on top of this, there was one more piece of ancient script in episode 8, Hey Pig Spender. And this one is very intriguing. When you translate this, it says, Freckles was here. Freckles was, of course, the dummy that Zog spoke through at the end of the season during the height of his madness. Oh, I see this castle already has a dummy. Am I right, dummy? But this seems to imply that Freckles might actually be sentient. Combine that with the fact that it was clearly Dagmar who sold him the dummy in the first place, and you got something very interesting happening here. If Freckles actually is sentient, this also means that he knows how to write in this ancient language, which clearly isn't a common script in Dreamland. It appears to tie to Maru and possibly Hell, which would further connect Dagmar and Freckles. We actually got our first look at Freckles back in the first episode of Disenchantment, seen here in the window of the dummy store. Since this takes place before Dagmar was de-stoned, I think that implies a few things about Freckles. For one, it means that Freckles was not a creation of Dagmar, but I do think it's likely that she imbued some sort of dark Maru or Hell based magic into Freckles. I expect that this was all part of the scheme to get Zog out of Dreamland. Plus, we saw that Miri the Mop Girl took Zog's crown and placed it in this cabinet here with Freckles. With Freckles and Zog's crown in the same place, I'm expecting that he's going to steal it and possibly bring it to Dagmar. What for? Good question, but obviously it's an important symbol of power in Dreamland. Plus, we saw that it seems to transmit a video feed back to Steamland. 
Ah, the crown, my favorite show. Also, did y'all notice that King Yogg's crown didn't seem to have this antenna that transmits back to Steamland? Looks like Steamland started spying on Dreamland with King Zog. How does it all tie together? I guess we'll find out when part four drops. Or maybe not till part five or six, if those ever happen. So with all of the script we've been able to translate, this is what the full alphabet looks like thus far. The only letters we're still missing are J, P, V, X, and Y. And I'm sure those letters will easily be translated after part four. I can only imagine they'll start using the script more for background gags now that the translations are out there. Futurama was jam packed with these and they were a ton of fun to translate. Although it's definitely possible that they'll continue to use this script in more mysterious ways, meant to hint at the mysteries of the show rather than just make jokes you have to work for. Either way, I'm excited to see how they handle it. It might be fun to try and speculate more based purely on ancient language translations. So how do y'all feel about this disenchantment agent script? Do you like that the show is making you work to decode their lore? Let me know below in the comments, and of course stay tuned, I got probably too many disenchantment videos planned based on viewership. Peace. Johnny! Two challenge.